I just did a series that I know the Orthodox apologists don't like, but on just believers' baptism. Um, yeah, they, they they like to present it like, Ooh. oh, well, see, the early church was yeah. in infant baptism. Well, certainly it was practiced at least in the third century on, but believers' baptism is what you see up until that point, and even when you see infant baptism, uh, I think the evidence would indicate believers' baptism was still just as common or maybe more common. It, it looks like clearly in the fourth century, and I think most infant baptizers would acknowledge that the fourth century believers' baptism is the main practice. So, um, yeah, so we, we kind of let them, oh, well, infant baptism, okay, that's the early church. Well, no, we can take a stand. The early church has a strong witness for believers' baptism. We are following the historic faith. Interesting, because isn't that, that sounds pretty controversial, depending on who hears you say that, because they're like, oh, no, that, that's not what the early church taught, whatever, whatever, which I guess in that case, we'd have to do a whole other episode on it. But you said you did a series on this. Yeah. So, so is that something people can check out and, Yeah, so there's, and it's, to? it's on Scroll Publishing now. Uh, there's four CDs. Okay. Uh, it goes, it starts with the New Testament, um, and that's one of the problems with people who go Orthodox. You got to stick with the New Testament. You know, mm -hmm. the early church, um, the early Christian writings are our best commentary on the New Testament. But when they start, when people start using them as an authority in their own right, you know, yeah. then they're dangerous because they're fallible humans and they would have never wanted to be used that way. You know, they're just trying to expound the New Testament and, mm -hmm. and we have a witness of what they believe, but they weren't trying to write things for, oh, this is what everyone should do for, you know, ages to, to come or anything like that. But yeah, always stick with the New Testament. And, and so that's where I start with the New Testament. Do we see anything about infant baptism there? You know, I, I go through the book of Acts, all so many baptisms, every time, you know, it says they believed, they believed, you know, even if it's a whole household, it said they all believed, you, you know. Mm -hmm. So, and then we look at the second century, you know, any mention there? I mean, we, we go through quote after quote, they, you, you know. Oh, wow. So, hmm. yeah. So mm -hmm. then we get mm -hmm. to where we you just do start getting some clear evidence of infant baptism. And, and first it's, generally emergency baptism an infant is dying and and so uh, a lot not everyone did it but a lot of parents like to baptize them they could feel like okay they you know were, were baptized when they were they were buried uh, no teaching that the child was lost if they weren't baptized but yeah you start seeing emergency baptisms but again you see emergency baptisms of people 12 19 in their 20s so it's obvious they weren't baptized as infants or they wouldn't be getting an emergency baptism, you know, when they're 12 or 19, you know, yeah. it's always because they, they have some fever, they're about to die and they get, you know, this emergency, you know, deathbed kind of baptism. So even that practice shows that the only reason even those infants got baptized was because they were going to die. Otherwise, yeah, they would not have been baptized. So actually that practice shows that believer's baptism was the norm. Because again, if all, ba if all babies were baptized from the start, then you wouldn't have to do these emergency ones. You know, mm -hmm. the fact you were doing it shows that, yeah, they didn't get baptized, you know, when, when they were a newborn and you're baptizing them at the year one or something like that, age one, you know, one year because they, you know, are, are dying and, and the, the, the parents want them, you know, baptized as a Christian, you know, before mm -hmm. they're buried. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I approve of, of that practice, but I don't know that sure, there's any but... tremendous harm in it either. Wow, that's that's so interesting though, because because yeah, I think that that has been one of the critiques I've heard about your work over the years. It's like, oh well, he's selectively reading or you know early church writings. He's missing one, which one of them that someone did mention specifically was that issue of baptism, which I did not know you'd done that series. So I'm gonna definitely text that person and be like, hey, check out this series. Yeah. Let me know what you think, because because they were like. They weren't necessarily agreeing, disagreeing, but they're just like, I think that's a blind spot. That, you know, uh, Berceau needs to, you know, whatever. He needs to, to address that. And it's really interesting to hear you say that because, yeah, I know there's definitely people out there that are, yeah, maybe they're reading a different era of church history. They're reading in a very yeah. different way. And I think that's that's And important they're being to, influenced. I mean, even us, we wouldn't have gone down the journey we did in mm -hmm. Texas. But like I say, the only source books as we had outside the Andy Nicene Fathers, which again, that's a, a, a lot to try to find. What did they say about this? <laughs> were these books published by Roman Catholics that sure. yeah, you know, topically had this laid out. So you see only these quotes that fit the Roman Catholic doctrine, and yeah. we didn't have anything, you know. Even when I did the dictionary, and I don't regret it, I made it as theologically neutral as I could. I didn't 
you know, and I was in a good position to do that because, like I say, Anglicans is kind of a bridge between Protestant and Catholic. And, and um, but I just I wanted to be honest that people could find the quotes there. Uh, but I didn't just selectively put ones in that fit whoever, whomever. I mean, but like I say, all the other people, yeah, their stuff is always just the stuff that 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 fits them. And so, yeah, it's convincing if if you don't want to look at the broad thing. So, yeah, people who think I'm, I'm only selectively quoting, I, I think it's just the other way around. I've, I've tried to, yeah, put everything in there and mm -hmm. acknowledge, you know, what uh, mm -hmm. what is there. They've never talked to me about the subject of infant baptism, so they just think they know what I believe. Because I never, I never did any CDs on that. I mean, this is the first time.